So tonight's the Indospore stain. Is it going already? Yeah, I went ahead and turned it on. I'm going to go over several things with you, uh, like the the agenda, etc. And we're going to do everything Indospore tonight. So everybody do the Shushka, which is big Russian for shut up. <laughs> All right. I'm going to lose people at me. That's a big rush All right. That means you. Be quiet. Thank you. All right. So uh, we're going to go over the agenda. Uh, there was a practice of acid fast gram stain from 4.30 to 6 at 6, which is now almost seven minutes past. Uh, we're going to go over everything about the Indospore stain. The chemistry, the theory, the genera that stain positive on it, the steps, the problems, and the demo. And just to be weird and sick and twisted, I'm going to start with the demo today. Um, after we finish discussing the endospore stain, we're going to do all uh, a, a really huge pop quiz. Long, miserable, hard, crying, I flunked it. So it's going to be really, really hard because it's going to be uh, very much like the one you're going to have for your uh, practice lab practical and the real lab practice. And so we're going to pretend you know everything tonight and see how well you do. And so um, in it, in the pop quiz, there's going to be theories about, uh, I mean, questions about the theory, theory of each stain, the chemistry of each stain and interpretation of results, things you see under the microscope. One of the places that you should go is go to, uh, on the website, under smears, and there's a long little sort of uh, study sheet for Lab Practical 1 just before you get to the smear. And if you remember, you skipped over it because you weren't thinking about Lab Practical 1 then. And so when we first uh, went over Smear, uh, and we went to that page where you clicked on the page, and you went and you chose uh, how to make a smear from auger, how to make a smear from broth, and then there was a, a button for gram and aspas and endospore and all that. Above, at the top of that page, there was a lot of hints and questions from Lab Practical 1 about how to focus the microscope, common errors, and stuff such as this. So, um, just to kind of show you where that is, Lab Practical 1, and then preparation of a smear, and let's see, I guess it was back here just a little bit, maybe it was under, maybe it was under Oh, I know where it is. Go to the go to the cards. Stop that. There it is. Cards. There it is. Rules for bonus points. Go down. Go to the card list. After you go to the card list, pick on smears, and there it is. Comments and common focusing errors and questions and if you see something. If you see a river, what is it? If you see tire tread appearance, what does that mean? All these things will be on the test. Um, here's a study sheet for LP1 from one of my students that made 105% at the end of the term. Hate her. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, this just tells you some of the things she thought was important about um, Lab Practical 1. So don't forget to look at that. Where is it? Under the purple buttons, under smears and stainings at the top of the page, study sheet for Lab Practical 1, common staining errors and problems with focusing. All right, so FYI on that. Uh, back to tonight's boring stuff. All right, uh, on announcements here, I've had a tremendous number of people ask me something really dumb. 
and I just want to make sure that you know how incredibly it ain't going to happen. And that is, could you please send me the answer sheet to all your lab practical one practice tests? Are you kidding? What do you think this is? Kindergarten? No. That's why I give you the test, so you can work them out, not memorize them. Which is what I've been telling people for two weeks. Go get in a study group. Print out the questions. Assign them to the people in the study group to look up, meet, discuss the questions. You're not going to get the same ones, but you'll get the same ones warped. So if you went over the question and you know why I was asking what I was asking, like, why, uh, do you see a if you see flowing like a river, what does that mean? Not heat fixed enough. Okay, what else would he say? Well, he said there were some other things he saw, like if you saw something that looked like a halo. Remember, here's your microbe, and, it does, and you see this around it. What does that mean? That means you heat, heat fixed it while it was wet. Uh, what if you see cells that are supposed to be rods, and they're all like this? They're very big and chubby. Over heat fix, they are about ready to explode. So, um, you need to get together and discuss. You cannot get my old test, work out the answers, and memorize them. It will not work. In fact, I specifically go over the questions and make it so if you memorize them and pick that answer that was right, it'll be wrong. Memorization is not learning, learning is understanding why something happened and being able to predict if things change, how the answer changes. Okay, so um, that's what you should do. Now, what if you and your study group get together and you have a bloody fight, there are fingernail tearings and markings and hair pulling involved. Okay, so you can't agree on an answer and you're really arguing over it. No problem. Make sure you go to Google Plus and everybody should have been signed up on Google Plus because I added every email address from Glendale College to my Google Plus. But if you go to my Google Plus site, which is this one, Donald Hicks LACC Micro, and if you do a search for this, you will find it. And uh, if you are not in the group, then make sure that you send me your email and ask me to add you to my circle so that you can post things. And so uh, people that are in the circle and so forth can add uh, postings to these things. And so you would just type in here and it would go to everybody on Google+. So if you go to Google+, and you go to the post, and you type in a post, then it will go to everyone and me. And I get it by email on my phone. So any time of day or night, I will get it. As soon as I get it, I will look. And if you have typed the question with all the answers, A, B, C, D, E, and then you put, we think, I think it's D, and the rest of the group thinks it's C, what is it? I will put what the correct answer is. If you're right, I'll put just correct. If you're wrong, I will say what the correct answer is and why. And that will post to everybody that's on Google+. So this is so that I don't have to retype the same questions a million times that people are having trouble with, and everybody gets the kind of study together. Now, I will actually be on the site looking for people to ask me questions on Sunday 12 to 3, which means I'm going to be living micro for a solid dang week, okay? Wednesday, till 10, 10.15 tonight, micro. Tomorrow, 2 till 10, micro. Friday, I'm having a micro session, at, a practice session at my other school from like 10 till 2. Saturday, I'm having one, 11.30 to 3.30. Sunday, I'm having 12 to 3, everybody on Google uh, Plus. Monday, we're having the last lecture on chapter three and a practice 
Lab Practical and Practice Lab. And then Tuesday is Lab Practical at LACC and Wednesday is here. So it's going to be not a moment of the day that I'm not going to be living in micro. And so you need to get with the plan and start, you know, type out the questions on Google Plus. And if you're not there, add yourself. If you don't know how to add yourself, send me your email and say add me. If I, if you send me your email and say add me, and by the way, it doesn't have to have a Glen, it doesn't have to be a Glendale. It can be another email that you like to use. Whatever, I don't care. It will come to me and I will add you to education and fall 2013 circles. Then it will go back to you and ask you if, if you accept that. And then it will come back to me and I'll make sure you're in the circle. So uh, anyway, that's the process if you haven't done it yet. And most everyone has done it, but let's hope you uh, have. And if you haven't, please do. All right. So. Um, after our big pop quiz tonight, we're going to do lab four, and we're going to concentrate on endospore staining, and then at the last half hour, you can stain anything you want. Uh, but the one that we're going to concentrate on is the two genera, and we have, there are two genera that are positive on the endospore stain. They're Bacillus and Clostridium, but Clostridium is anaerobic, and we don't have a carbon dioxide incubator. They're too hard to grow, and many of them are deadly like Botox, anthrax, stuff like that. So we're going to do the aerobic ones, bacillus. Anything with a capital B is going to make an endospore. It's going to be positive on the endospore stain. So we're going to do the B cirrus, the B megatherium, the B subtilis, and then the big problem organism is going to be smegmatis. Sorry. Subtilis. Um, and the big problem one on this <laughs> organism, remember there's always a problem organism on every stain, is smegmatis. Now remember the problem organism on the gram stain was bacillus and smegmatis, mostly bacillus. And the problem on the acid fast stain was bacillus, because remember some of the endospores took the hot heat. And the problem on the endospore stain is smegmatis again. It's the problem organism. So you're going to do all the bacillus we have. You're going to do smegmatis. You're going to do at least one of our gram negatives, E. coli, Proteus mirabilis, or E. erogenes, and then the uh, positive epoxy staph aureus. So those are the stains, and I'll put the chart up later. Next class, we're going to finish chapter three, the microscope, and then we're going to immediately uh, get into our outfits, have a 50 question multiple choice, and I'll hand you a number two. And you will do one gram, one acid fast, and one endospore, so have slides washed when you come in. That'll be your practice, lab practical, so that when you walk out of here, you will know whether or not you need to kill yourself or study. And most of you will need to study. Killing yourself won't do any good, it just avoids the problem. And so, um, and this will count as a chapter test. So I want everybody to be serious about it because remember, all the studying you do for the practice will help you on the lab practical. So there's, you're not wasting any time. You're actually doing what I try to do to all my students and that is scare the living hell out of them <coughs> early enough that when they find out they they have time to study before the big test. And that's what we're trying to figure, to make you realize is how much you really do know and where you need to study. So that's why we're having that. Uh, Sunday is 12 to 3 on Google Plus, questions and answers. And remember, you can put anything on Google Plus at any time. But don't, I have had people say, um, on practice test number 13, I put dog. <laughs> I don't carry the test around with me, and I have a, like 182 practice tests. And so if people go to the old website, they'll find like three old lab practical ones. When they go to this website, they'll find another lab practical one. There are gazillions of lab practical ones out there. So you have to type the whole question with all the answers, and then if you don't say, 
if you just type, I don't know the answer to number 13, and I type the question and all the answers, I'm, not, I'm gonna type back, what do you think this is, an answer machine? <laughs> you try, then I answer. You don't try, I don't answer. And if, if it's obvious, like, you know, somebody said in one last term, um, what, what is purple on the gram thing? I'm going to lose my poop all over you. <laughs> all right? Don't be typing me crap that you should know or you could easily look up. Okay? Ugh. No, it should be actually something. I don't want to scare you, but it really does annoy me if I get that, you know, what color is positive on the acid test? Okay. Um, for the theories and steps and problems, is it just video lectures or is there any type of PowerPoint that has that information? Nothing that I haven't covered in lecture or isn't on the staining diagram. I mean, you know, the where we went over the stain. Nothing that we haven't covered. Okay, so I'm not going to say on page 233 in the book. No. Nothing that we didn't cover in class. Now, you know there might be one or two of those. What's the word? systematic mean, just so I can say it's comprehensive, but it's not going to be anything super hard or anything like that. All right, so um, Wednesday, when you come in, is the big test for you. Bring in a Scantron 884, that's the big one, two-sided. It doesn't have any place to write an essay because there is no essay. It's just 200 multiple choice questions. When you come in, you're going to have the 200 multiple choice questions. You'll have 30 seconds per question. After that, uh, times if you finish early, you can start the next part of the test early. But do be on time, because I may decide to give the pictures first, where I put up the pictures uh, for five seconds on each one, and you tell me what's up, what shape, what stain, and whether it's positive or negative. So be on time. Uh, have 10 slides washed. Uh, we'll probably have the pictures first because people finish at different times and I can get that out of the way. So I'll probably have the pictures first and then we'll have the multiple choice, 30 seconds per question, and then I'll hand you each a numbered tube and you will have 15 minutes to give me uh, to put your bacteria on a slide and bring me back the tube so that I can see if you're a chunker. And what happens if you're a chunker? You go home. And you get to come on a Friday or a Saturday, whichever is most uh, annoying to you. Or you mean maybe a Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Something, you know, in the middle of church. <laughs> so you don't want to be a chunker. Uh, so any questions about what's coming up, what we're doing tonight? how we're going to run the practice lab practical, and how we're going to run the real lab practical. Yeah. So if we're making test smears, we're Yeah, you're not going to air dry and heat fix them. You're just going to get the bacteria out of the tube, so you can like put like, uh, dip it, you'll probably dip into the tube three times. Heat it, cool it. Uh, first, you're going to put all 10 drops on all 10 slides, and then you're going to just get it out and scoop like three slides at a time. And then go back and pick up another. Yeah. We don't we don't um, heat up the loop while we're doing No, you don't have to. Same micro over and over and over again. So you're doing the same micro from one tube with a number on it. And of course, if you're really lucky, you won't get E. coli. Because you know how hard it is to do the gram stay on. Okay, so anyway, that's the plan. Any questions about anything? And of course, if you have questions, remember Google Plus it. Well, 200 questions. I mean, there's all every every test I grade is 100 percent. So one third of it's going to be on making the stains. One third of it's going to be on the multiple choice, and one third's going to be on reading the pictures. And then that all adds together to 100 percent. So I, what I usually do is make 100 points for each part, and then. Okay, so any questions about anything? Okay, so what I'm going to do first is, just to be fun, I'm going to do the demo on the Indus Force thing first. Um, let's, 
no, let's do the lecture on it. Screw it. Let's do the regular old uh, thing first. Go through the regular sequence of events. Okay, comments about the endospore stain. One, it's the easiest of all the stains. Two, it's the hardest to read. So it's incredibly easy to do, incredibly hard to interpret. And um, of course, these are the colors. It's going to be that same old saffron and pink, not the hot pink, but the saffron and pink. Uh, and the uh, the primary stain is malachi green. What color do you think that is? Green. Okay. Now, why is there so little green on this picture? Because usually the primary stain, I put a big old long word in the primary color and a big old long word in the secondary color. But in this case, there's only two of these letters on this whole slide that's green. And the answer is, forget green. Forget it. If you are looking for green, you're going to miss this thing. Now, everything we've been told before about if it keeps the first color, it's positive, and if it keeps the second color, it's negative, is true. But if you trigger your mind on the word green, you're going to mess up when you get to the problem things. The ones that, that are difficult to read is going to mess you up. Let me just first tell you a little bit about the stain. First of all, this stain is to stain something that's hard to stain. Name three things that are hard to stain. Lipids. Lipids. Glass. 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 Endospores. All right. And so that means if it's hard to stain, what physical event in the universe is going to happen while we're staining it? Heat. Heat. That's right. So you're going to be heating it like we did with the acid fast, hold it in, hold it out, hold it in, hold it out until it evaporates just a little bit. You're going to have to be extremely cautious on this one not to overcook it because Malachi Green is evil. It's like an evil person. It spreads its evil everywhere. Look on the floor here and you will rarely see anything except Damn Malachi Green! One drop of it can be walked all over campus. It is a nightmare stain. It spreads, it stays on your hands for two weeks, it stays on your face for a week. It binds to the glass forever. It is a big pain to work with. And so you do not want to overcook it. Um, that's the primary, and you're familiar with saffron, and it's a light pink color, pinkish orange, orangey pink color. Um, it's called the Schaefer Fulton. What's the uh, Neil? Yes. Something Neil. I forgot. Anyway, don't forget to know the proper name for it. And it's made for these. These two genera, Bacillus and Clostridium. Only Bacillus and Clostridium make these survival structures called endospores. Are endospore cells? No, why? They don't have cell parts. They are a piece of DNA surrounded by a spore coat made up of two things, diplocolinic acid and calcium ions. In some horrendously tough bond that no one understands. Right now, the Pentagon is still trying to work to discover spore coat chemistry. Why? It's light. It's imperf light meaning lightweight. It's almost impervious to heat, chemicals, radiation. Did you hear me? Radiation. In other words, it takes 4.5 mega rads of radiation to penetrate every spore known to man. 
That is a huge amount of radiation. So it is a survival structure that resists drying, resists heat, resists uh, freezing, it resists radiation, it resists uh, solar radiation, it re resists um, radio waves, uh, it even resists some sonication. Uh, the only thing that will, that we, there are some really harsh chemicals like glutaraldehyde, which will destroy any living thing, that will penetrate and kill, uh, get rid of or destroy endospores. And pressure plus steam. In other words, 131 degrees centigrade plus 31 pounds per square inch of pressure for 15 minutes will destroy every known endospore. And that's called an autoclave and sterilization. Or if you're, you know, your mother uses an autoclave at home. If she was like the old-fashioned mothers like mine who used to make her, uh, used to uh, uh, freeze vegetables. And she would put vegetables in a pressure cooker and bring it up until it pressure cooked for about 10 minutes and then bring them down and put them in plastic bags and put them in the freezer and they'd be kept fresh. That is autoclaving. We call it a pressure cooker. It's a steam device where you get build up pressure and a high temperature. You get rid of spores that can cause rotting. Uh, the spores are such good survival structures that we found some in the pyramids that are over 5,000 years old. And when we put them under optimum conditions, they germinated into bacilli. So these are extremely difficult to destroy microbes. Uh, uh, they're not microbes, but they're uh, survival structures. The cell that makes the spore is called the vegetative cell. And it has all the parts of a cell. Membranes and so forth, and ribosomes, and cytoplasm, and all of that. So the part of the cell that stains is called the vegetative cell. And it's the part that when times get rough, will put a spore coat around the DNA and fall apart. The vegetative cell will. What's left is the survival structure in the spore that will just sit there in a stasis, like suspended animation. There is no metabolic activity going on in an endospore. It's setting and waiting until germination is optimal. The right temperature, the right wetness, the right amount of food is around, and then they will germinate. And one cell will make one endospore that will germinate into one cell. So it's not reproduction. Uh, if this vegetative cell exists in an oxygen environment and needs oxygen, is aerobic, then it is bacillus. The genera that makes endospores anaerobically is Clostridium. Bacillus is abbreviated capital B period. And Clostridium is abbreviated capital C little L period. Remember, of course, all scientific names. The genus is capitalized, the species is not, and they are underlined, bold, italicized, or all three. so it doesn't rot and they sterilize hopefully what's inside if it was made improperly 
the clostridium will produce a gas causing the can to swell. Never open a swollen can. It has got clostridium botulinum inside, and clostridium botulinum is the most toxic toxin on earth. Uh, diluted one million times, we inject it into ugly people, and it will paralyze their muscles in their face that cause lines and wrinkles for about a month and a half. 500 bucks for one, a month and a half. I don't get it. Never mind. Plus, the fact you have no expression. Uh, because your face muscles are paralyzed from Botox. Yeah. Anthrax. But you know, breathing anthrax spores will turn your blood basically to powder uh, and kill you in less than a week. And so anthrax is a clostridium. Clostridium anthraxis. Uh, I mean, it's still it's anthraxis. Sorry, it's an aerobic one. Uh, so there are some pretty deadly ones, but almost everywhere in the environment we have these endospores. So if you leave anything open, you're going to see uh, the most common one is Stereothermophilus. So if you ever look at one of our cultures and you see something that looks like a snake, a very, very long, 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 twisty rod, something that looks like this, that's Bacillus Stereothermophilus. And it's in the air, and it's the most difficult one to kill. And we actually test our autoclaves with it. Uh, once a month, if you're in a hospital environment, you're supposed to run a test strip or a uh, autoclave test, where you put in the, you buy a little strip with this bacteria's um, endospores on it, and you autoclave it, and then you drop it into sterile um, broth and stick it in the incubator, and if it turns cloudy, your autoclave isn't working. So you, this is how we make sure that our sterilization process is working on autoclave. Okay, so anyway, key thing that we're looking for in the chemistry is calcium ions. And since cotton has calcium ions, if you drop the malachite green on anything with any cotton in it, it will never, ever, ever come out. Ever. Longer than marriage. Okay? So, what's the chemistry behind the gram stain? Thickness of the cell wall. What's the chemistry behind the acid fast stain? Lipids. What's the chemistry behind the endospore stain? Calcium ions. Where are the calcium ions? In the spore coat of the endospore. Now, remember, spore, the word spore, I just misused it. I said in the spore coat. I should have said the endospore coat. What's the difference between a spore and an endospore? You need to know. Spores are reproductive structures, are <coughs> fungi and plants. One mushroom can make a million spores, each one can generate another mushroom. But one bacteria makes one endospore that can germinate into one bacteria. So if endospores are not reproductive, they're survival. Okay, any question about anything I went over there? Endospores is survival or is it spores? Endospores are survival. Spores are reproductive. How do we see the difference? Uh, one album, one cell will make one endospore that will germinate to one cell. And one spore can make a mushroom that can make millions of mushrooms. That's reproduction. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. I went over all this. Uh, remember that these two genera, Bacillus and Clostridium, have 100, uh, 50 to 100 layers of peptidoglycan. So how do they stain on the gram stain? 50 to 100. They're positive. Remember, one or two layers of peptidoglycan in your gram negative. 50 to 100, 
your gram positive. One of the very confusing questions that people will have on this test is, I'll say, a acid fast positive microbe stains what? On the gram stain. Well, there's only one thing on earth that's acid fast positive, mycobacterium and no cardia. And on the gram stain, you know they stain gram positive. All right, what if I say an acid fast positive microbe, what does it stain on the endospore stain? Answer, there's only two things that stain positive on the endospore stain, clostridium and bacillus. So is mycobacterium clostridium or bacillus? No, so its answer is negative. So the thought process you've got to get. Can you repeat that? All right. <laughs> An acid fast positive stains what on an endospore stain? Negative. Acid fast positive is what? Mycobacterium. Is mycobacterium clostridium or bacillus? No, it is not, so it is negative. Remember, the only thing on earth that's acid fast positive is nocardia and mycobacteria. And the only thing on earth that's endospore positive is bacillus and clostridium. So if it isn't bacillus of clostridium, it can't be positive on the endospore. And if it isn't nocardia or mycobacterium, it can't be positive on the acid. All right, so this one's very easy. You're gonna make your smear, and you're gonna cover it with malachite green, and you're gonna do that crap through the, <laughs> through the uh, Bunsen burner again, where you pass it through and hold it out, pass it through and hold it out, and you're gradually raising the temperature of the primary stain until it begins to evaporate about 10 percent. And once about 10 to 15 or so percent of the malachi green has evaporated and before it binds to the glass, you shake it off, rinse it off, and counter stain with saffron. That's it. It is so, so incredibly easy to do. Key things to remember, here's things that I've seen people do wrong. One, we have chintzy people that are, are not Americans. I can tell you're not real Americans because you're not using enough stain. They're putting one drop. <laughs> Flood it! I want a dome! You know, over Notre Dame they're hitting a drop. It's a dome! So I want a dome of stain over that circle. I don't want three drops. Get it in there, get it on there. Then shake it off and get a dome on the other thing. And when you're doing the alcohol, I don't want three drops. I want a half to a quarter to a half of a dropper full. Squish! Let it run off, wash it. Not. <laughs> Why? Because this is too much time. Squish, wash. One drop two drops, three drops, that's four seconds. So, I'm seeing a lot of people being chintzy with this. Put a lot, get it off. That's it. Uh, on this one, be careful with this heating thing. If you get it too hot, too quick, it's going to bind to everything. And all green is like all hot paint, always wrong. So. Any questions about process? Because we're going to talk about the problems next, and that's the big one. Yeah? Um, how many times do you have to pass it through the thing? So it evaporates and pulls back about 10%. Can't do times because the where people put it in the flame and how long they put it in there totally varies with the person. Okay, so um, next. These are just the steps. Be sure to put a Bunsen burner paper underneath because this one, remember, it's like cancer, it spreads. Malachi green, awful. All right, so here's some interesting tidbits. Any stains can be an endospore stain. You've seen endospores on every one of your stains you've been looking at. I'll say, what's that clear little pink thing there? <gasps> on your gram stain. It's an endospore. And on the acid test, what was that clear little thing? 
endospores. Any stain can be an endospore stain. So remember, this is a gram stain, yet you can see here on the inside part, okay? The vegetative part is the, the sort of solid. It's the one that's kind of clear inside, that's the endospore. So if you see a, a colored ring and an interior is clear, that's the endospore. Now, endospores are always rods or very small circles. Just uh, They always come from rods. There uh, is only one genus that produces endospores that's circular and it doesn't cause any disease, so we ignore it. So remember, whenever you see endospores, what's the vegetative cell shape going to be? Rod. rod. It's going to be a rod. Now, sadly, subtilis. Subtilis, many of you did it on the gram stain, and notice that the cell is not much bigger than the endospore. Ooh, annoying, isn't it? It is. So, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Usually the cells are egg-shaped and a lot smaller than the cells, like in Bacillus megatherium. I'm going to get lots of... Uh, contrast here when we do this. Now remember this is the most impart, important part of the lecture right now and that is problems reading an endospore stain. Over here. If you look at green you would get this one right. You would see that the endospore is a very light green and the cell <coughs> is pink. You would get it right, but you would also get it right with the way I teach you to do it, so you can't miss it when you get to another one. And that is, the first thing you think when you look for endospore is, one, is it a rod? If it's a rod, it could be endospore positive. If it's a coxie, can it be? No. So the first question you ask yourself is, okay, first you ask yourself, is it an endospore stain? How do you know? Pink and green. Almost every stain, every slide we look at will have a little piece of green artifact because that Malachi green sticks to everything. So when you look at a picture of a stain, you will see that saffron color. Well, how do you know that's not a gram negative? You look for some garbage or debris that might hint that it's green. So, if you just see the pink saffron in color, you're not going to know if it's gram negative or endospore negative. But I will always pick one that has some garbage green in it somewhere. So you'll know if it's endospore negative or gram stain. Because, remember, gram negative and endospore negative are the same color, saffron in it. All right, so first thing you ask yourself is, is it an endospore stain? How do you know? Right. Color pairings. Purple and pink is gram. Hot pink and baby blue is acid effects. Pink and green is endospore. So if you see that saffron and pink, it's either going to be gram, negative, gram stain or endospore. So you got to look for either purple or green. Once you decide it's an endospore stain, the next question you ask yourself, hopefully you're writing this down, is, is it a rod? Second question is, is it a rod? If the answer is yes, then it could be in the score positive. But you don't know, you have to go to the third question. And the third question is, do I see holes in the rod? If you see holes, then it's in the score positive. There is always holes in every rod if it's in the score positive. Sometimes they will stain green. Lots of times they won't. And by the way, Sirius often hardly ever does the endospores take the green, no matter how perfect you do it. Stereothermopolis and subtil uh, and Sirius usually doesn't take the endospores don't take the green. So if you're looking for green, what are you gonna get? F. What do you look for? Rods with holes. Rods with holes. 
Now remember, everything under there is the same micro. So if you see 20 of them with holes, then they are all the same thing. Just because you don't see that one with a hole doesn't mean anything. Remember, everything in the tube is the same micro. Yeah? So if it's like that, it's um, endospore positive? Endospore positive. Why? You've got pink and green, so you know it's an endospore. Secondly, you've got a rod. Thirdly, you've got empty holes. Did I say anything about green? No, no I didn't. Ignore green. If you think green, you're going to be wrong. And I'll show you why in a minute. All right, gram stain. Is it going to be endospore positive? Yes, you can see the endospores. You can even see the holes. So when you do your gram stain on the lab practical, if you see holes, what do you know your endospore is going to be? Positive. So you already got the answers. So, you know, Use some logic from me. Look at this one over here. Old culture. This is subtilis. Almost everything has gone to endospores. So if you see lots of repeating ovals, egg shapes, that have that sort of clearing in the center, you know that this whole thing essentially has gone to endospores. There's a rod, there's a rod. There's a few rods. There's one or two that they haven't ejected the endospore yet and haven't fallen apart. But most of these have ejected the endospore and the rod has fallen apart. This one I love the most. <laughs> Don't you just want to cry when you see this one? That's a rod and there's the hole. That's a rod and there's the hole. Isn't that hard? <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't get that on. There's the hole. Really, really, really tiny rod with a really, really, really tiny hole. I usually don't give that on the test because I usually don't take the class that much. <laughs> All right, Graham's thing. Going to be in this for positive or negative? Positive. positive. And of course, it's gram positive. Here's a, that very same micro, same culture, done with a proper gram stain. I mean, a proper in this for stain. Now, let's just ignore green and answer the question. Is this an endospore state? Yes. 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 You've got pink and you've got green. All right. Number two, is it rods? Yes. yes. There are rods. Okay. Number three, do the rods have holes? Yes, they do. Yes. So what is it? Positive. Ignore the green. All right. So let's talk about the one that makes everybody cry. Every one of you is going to miss it. <laughs> All right, mycobacteria takes the green. Remember, anything hard to stain under heat will absorb the primary stain. So mycobacterium, when you're staining it with endospore stain, some of them are going to take the green, and some of them aren't because it's dissolved in water. Carbol fusion is dissolved in water, so some of them repel the green. Some of them, the lipid with the heat will melt and be green. So what you're going to get is rods that are half green and half pink. So how do you know it's not endospore positive? Because you ignore green. First of all, you're going to ask yourself, is it an endospore thing? I'm going to show you. for a second. What stain is this one? Nope. That's blue. Acid fast positive or negative? Negative. Good. And is actually coxy. So it's a little bit hard to tell there, but I'll make it a little bit more definitive for you. What's this thing? Endospore. Endospore. Why? You've got pieces of green garbage 
and you've got that saffron color. So let's do this test on it. Is it a rod? It's a rod. Yes. yes. Okay. Do they have holes? Yes. yes. So it's in the spore positive. Even though most of them, most of the uh, in the spores, there are a few up here that took the green color. Not many of them did. Okay, that one's a little bit too hard to read. How about this one? Endospore. It's an endospore stain. That's green and pink. Yeah, I know. Green and pink. That's magmatus. I'll get, try to get it bigger. What's this one? Endospore. Endospore. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. All those little eggs. There's only one rod, two rods, three, four, five, six rods in the whole picture. One of them has a hole, but it's all repeating egg shapes. So that's one that's gone all to end spores. This is also one that's gone all to end spores. The red rod, gone all to end spores. This is an acid fast positive. There's a few blue ones. Here is yours. This is in the spore. This is green and pink. Red and pink rods, the same size. Now the rods are incredibly small, but they don't have holes. So that's the way, this is the one that everybody misses. And it's 25% of the exam. So you've got to know that if you see red and green rods the same size on an endospore stain, then it's mycobacteria. And the red, and here's something really strange. When you look at this today, when you do mycobacterium on the endospore stain, the green things are going to look bigger than the pink ones because it's an optical illusion that darker colors look bigger than lighter colors. It's just a thing our brain does. Can endospores be bigger than the mommy that made them? No. So if the green things appear to be bigger than the pink ones, it cannot be endospores. So remember, first you've got to decide if, if this color is green and pink, and then you've got to decide rods, and that is definitely rods. Then you're going to look for holes, and you're seeing no holes. And then you're going to look at the green things and say, are the green things and the red things about the same size? Yeah, they look the same size. Even the green things look a little bigger than the red things. Is that possible? No, that's not possible. It's endospore negative. It's mycobacteria. So if you looked at green, what would you say? You'd say positive. If you were looking for green, you'd say positive on that. But they're rods. They're not egg-shaped. Remember, to be endospores, they got to be egg-shaped. They got to be smaller than the red rods that made them. Those are not egg-shaped, and they are not smaller than the red rods that made them. So they are not in the spores. Okay, here. It, so this is smegmatis on an acid bath. This is smegmatis on an endospore, and this is smegmatis on a gram. This is smegmatis again on the endospore when a person didn't heat it super hot. This one, they heated it super hot. They're both positive. This one, a few hot pink ones and mostly blue rods. This one's mostly hot pink ones and a few blue ones. They're both acid fast positive. This is in the spore. What is it? In the spore negative. What's this? Brown, white, pink, purple, and pink. What's this? In the spore. Because you got green and you got pink. You have rods? Yep. yep. Do the rods have holes? Yep. 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 So it's positive. What's this? Remember black yep. is not a choice, so it's Graham. purple. Right. It's purple. And is it going to be in the spore positive? Yes. 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 But you can see you can even see the end spore. So this is a gram positive rod. What's this? Acid fast. Acid fast. Hot pink rods and blue rods. What's this? Gram. Positive or negative? Positive. Mostly purple rods. What's this? Gram. Gram. Coxie. Gram positive again. What's this one? Gram. Gram. What is it? Positive or negative? Positive. 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 And is it going to be endospore positive or negative? There's a hole. What's this yeah. one? Acid fast. 
same, positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Those are blue rods. The hot pink things are eggs. In this pool. Don't be cool. Egg-shaped things that are hot pink, that is not SFS positive. You're looking for the cell. What's the cell? The big long thing. That's the cell. What color is it? Blue. That's all that matters. Okay, so you have been tortured on the problems of the endospore stain. They got a Scantron 882 approach, a fresh shawl, and a pencil. Okay, so watch me quickly make our little smear here, and then uh, what's the reason that I, I'm going to heat this to red hot in the top here, and then count to 5,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5, I'm going to capture the drop here in the little one. thing. Put it on this little circle here. Why do I heat it again? I just put essentially sterile water on there. Why do I heat it to the loop again? Get a good habit so that every time you pick up a loop, you heat it to red hot, sterilize it before you use it and after. Every time you use it. Blame this, blame that. This is bacillus, so I'm going to go past halfway. I'm going to touch it down and brush a little bit of the cloudiness. Remember to hold it up like that so you can see where the stuff has been scooped off. Because people could have scooped off everything from it. I had people taking lager that had nothing on it and staining it for two hours. Oh. And they were going, I can't see anything on my slide. Why have I not got anything on my slide? Because there's nothing on it. Okay, that slide wasn't really clean. Okay, so I'm going to do my quick little lung. While I'm doing this, would you grab me a malachi green and a saffron? Uh, yeah, they're probably underneath there. So in my circle is now dry. I don't care about anywhere else. I'm going, I know it's a little bit too heavy, but I don't want to waste time. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to get my dome of malachite green. Remember, don't pick it up by the lid. This one 